Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to move over to the Soka River in western Slovenia for the Third Battle of Isonzo between the Second and Third Armies of the Kingdom of Italy against Austro-Hungary's Archduke Friedrich and the German Fifth Army. This occurred between October 18th and November 4th, 1915. The unfortunate Italians today are still led by Luigi Cadorna, the Chief of Staff of the Italian Army and still unbeliever in the power of machine guns. However, the one positive note is that he is the father of Raphael Cadorna Jr., who is also a general in World War I and II, but was also famous for, as one of the Italian resistance commanders against the Nazi forces during World War II. Along with Cadorna was General Pietro Frugani, who is not really known for anything but being Cadorna's general, and who was not called back when Cadorna was fired later in the war. The third Italian commander was another returning general, Prince Emmanuel Filiberto di Savoia, the commander of the Third Army itself. Unfortunately, Prince Savoia would be promoted to Field Marshal by Benito Mussolini in 1926. You can kind of see where that was going. Under the command of all three of these men were 330 battalions of troops, comprising of a little over 400,000 men. Attached to them were 130 cavalry squadrons and 1,250 artillery pieces. Defending against them were four commanders that are all returning to the series. The overall commander was our returning top Austrian, Archduke Frederick, Duke of Tuscan, who was siblings with Queen Maria Christina of Spain. Under Archduke was Franz Xaver Joseph Conrad von Hotzendorf, who before the war had called continuously for the military attack against Serbia to rescue the Austro-Hungarian Empire he believed was disintegrating. The next in command was Archduke Eugene Ferdinand Pius Bernhard Felix Maria of Austria Tuscan, who was the last Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights from the Habsburg dynasty. Last but never least was the Lion of Isonzo, Svetozar Borovic, von Banya ni Borojevic, who was the only commander here that was not born in nobility. Instead, he was born in the village of Umedic in the Croatian military frontier, who joined cadet school at the age of 10, and by the end of the Great War would be promoted all the way up to field marshal and, and awarded the highest honors of Austro-Hungary's military order of Maria Theresia. Under command of these commanders was more than 184 battalions and 604 artillery pieces that consisted of approximately 220,000 men, or approximately one half of the attacking force size. The winner today is the Archduke Friedrich in his repeated victory with his Austro-Hungarian army. The battle itself is just a continuation of the first two attempts by Cadorna to attack Austro-Hungarian positions on the Isonzo River. Cadorno had allowed his troops to rest and recuperate for more than two months since the Second Battle of Isonzo. Realizing part of his error, Cadorno, who still believed machine guns were a passing fad, had agreed to bring more than 1,200 artillery pieces up to assist his assaults. Cadorno's goal was to take the bridges at Bovik, Tolman, and the town of Gorizia. Eschewing focusing on any target specifically, Cadorno placed his men evenly across the front while the Austro-Hungarians focused their forces into specific defensive locations, including Mount San Bettino and Mount San Michel. Once again, Cadorna did not seem to take machine guns seriously, nor did he address the fact that this very mountainous terrain was excellent for defending positions of the Austro-Hungarians. Instead, he decided to use extensive artillery barrages, and starting October 18th, began to advance on Plave and Mount St. Michel, trying to outflank the Austro-Hungarians defending Gorizia. Most of the fighting between the forces was on a plateau near San Michel, with Austro-Hungarians being directly commanded by Svetozar Borovic. It was a meat grinder, but because of the defensive positions held by the Austro-Hungarians, the Austro-Hungarian 5th Army was able to hold even though they were severely outnumbered. The Italians halted their attack for two weeks and then renewed it. The result was that even though Cadorna had briefly seized Mount Sabatino, they were unable to hold it and the machine gun fire once again stopped the flanking at Gorizia. By November 4th, the Austro-Hungarian commanders could claim victory for the Third Battle of Isonzo, although at a huge cost for both sides. The Italians suffered at least 10,700 killed, 44,300 wounded, and 12,000 missing or captured for at least 67,000 casualties. The Austro-Hungarians suffered more than 8,200 killed, 26,400 wounded, and at least 7,200 missing or captured, or a total of at least 41,800 casualties. This unfortunately would not be the largest losses on this offensive that was to come later in the war. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War. Yeah,
Let's go.